Okay folks, time to get stuck into replacing the anti-roll bar uh, drop links on the rear of the R32. So I'm going to climb onto the car and just to show you where they are. Here, this is me, you can see the UK car passenger rear wheel there, the trailing arm, and it's just in front of the trailing arm, in front of the wheel. You can see that link there. That is the drop link, which goes up then to the trailing arm. If I move the camera up, hopefully that is visible. You can see that wee small short bar going right up to the trailing arm. That's it there. So you can see they're looking quite wet there. I have both sides there coated in uh, plus gas and the hope these bolts come out quite easy. Um, so my next stage will be to try and get these off. Um, I'm probably going to try and do the bottom ones just because they're easier to access and see how they come out. And as you can see, it seems to lay out a bit more visibility on the other side, just there. And you can see they do look quite crusty, so it might be good fun trying to get these nuts off, but I'll try. Okay folks, as you can see I'm going to try cheating here with the impact gun. Um, the impact obviously works by knocking as it goes round, so this may well loosen these bolts quite quickly. So I'm going to try this as a first sort of method just to see how they come out. Um, that's a 16mm socket by the way. Let's see? Okay folks, as you see there, that nut is pretty much welded onto the threaded bar there and it's just spinning that far end. So yep, as thought, um, it's going to be good fun trying to get these out. So what I'm probably going to end up having to do is cut off the uh, threaded section here and trying to see if that will come out that way. So like a lot of these jobs, small job turns into a big one but it's par for course um, I'll also maybe try with a spanner and put a hex head in there and uh, or like an allen key get a spanner a 16mm spanner and try and undo it that way to see if that will maybe force that not to come out try that maybe next hi folks just to show you how the drop links are meant to be released you can hopefully see there the allen key with the spanner around it. Basically the spanner should release that nut and the allen key should hold it in place. And what my problem is the nut and the threaded uh, collar that goes through the middle of it is now just rusted all together so it's all one piece. So it's just spinning within the ball joint of the uh, drop link. So anyway, uh, short story is um, I can't get it out with the spanner because it's turning. The Allen key isn't actually holding it by hand because the inside of it doesn't have uh, the hex face anymore. It's just rusted off to nothing. So what I'm going to end up having to do is cut, get a cutting wheel and cut through the head of the nut to try and release it that way. So fingers crossed that'll do it. Hi folks, just a quick update on the drop link situation. Um, these are pretty corroded as I suspected they might be when I started into the job. Um, basically the nuts there um, are all one piece, the nuts, anti roll bar, the stud etc are all corroded, corroded together. So what I'm doing is using a Dremel and a circular blade cutting through the stud and the collar that goes through the bush there 
um, as you can possibly see on camera there um, I'm nearly through it might not come out too well there but I'm nearly through so I'm gonna keep doing that and that should ultimately hopefully release the drop link and hopefully that then releases the knot there so that hopefully falls out and obviously I'm replacing these drop links anyway so if they come out in bits I don't honestly mind hey folks some good news there um, hopefully you can see against my hand there very strong sunlight's not helping you'll see I have the uh, drop link disconnected there and as you can see with all the sharp metal it's been cut through um, I'm going to go back out here from under the car and show you the bolt there so it come out and I ended up using a hacksaw as well just to cut it out the wee Dremel discs that I'm using aren't quite large enough in diameter to go straight past the anti-roll bar and go right to the middle of that bolt so it was finished off just with a hacksaw good sharp blade cut through it job done now it's time for the more difficult part of taking the wheel off and trying to get the top bolt undone and I will cross my fingers that it comes off easily or easier than this one Hi folks, you can see I have the rear wheel off now to do the upper uh, part of the drop link uh, Apologies for any noise in the background, there's a bit of gardening going on as well here But anyway, you see this is the driver's side um, Going round to the back here And the top nut for the drop link is that one there um, so as you can see it's all wet i've soaked it in plus gas to try and release it and obviously giving it a wire brush down so that the plus gas actually gets in um yeah i'll not say too much until i try to take this off but um this one takes a torx or a splined uh key or a bit that goes into the inside of the the uh, stud there some of them are just hex heads, depends on the manufacturer, they do tend to change a bit but anyway it's going to be a splined or torx bit goes in there and we'll see what size the nut is there and we'll try and get it off. Hey folks, as you'll see there I've managed to get the nut off which is that jobby there. came off, it was on pretty tight so two spanners on the end of each other managed to take it off However, the drop link is pretty much seized into the trailing arm there. So I'm trying to hit this out with a hammer. And of course, with a caliper being there, you don't really get a direct shot at it. So I'm trying my best to tap this out. So I'll see how I go this way. Um, yeah, and report back if I come up with any tricks. Hi folks, bit of success. I've finally got the drop link out. Yeehaw. Um I may have sworn quite a bit so you it's as well I wasn't actually showing that in camera but it managed to come out. Um short story is the nut that holds it on, as mentioned, come out okay using the double spanner technique just to give a bit of leverage because there isn't actually a great deal of room, as mentioned, sort of between the caliper. So that nut came off okay, but what I found was this was seized into the trail and arm bracket. So you can see the way it's sort of damaged at the end. What I was using was this tool, a drift pretty much, or a, a taper punch as per the name suggests. Um, basically I was going in an angle tapping that with uh, a good heavy hammer. It wasn't doing a great deal so I went round to the back and started hitting there with a, the same heavy hammer and then went back round to the front tapped it out again. It was putting a reasonable bit of force in it and that eventually freed it up. Um, so yeah, that's it. Out. Um, and as you can see, if you look into that, the bushings are well past it. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I, I took them out. While it wasn't particularly much fun, uh, at least they're out. And I can feel, obviously I can move these with my hand, they're pretty rough. So 
yeah they're they're well past their best so hopefully i'm gonna try and get a new one fitted tonight um lucky enough to have the civic i can drive it into work tomorrow so if i don't get this other one fitted i'll drive the civic in but fingers crossed i can get this one in and maybe drive it tomorrow okay yes it's not ideal not having the other side done but at least the car is drivable um, and obviously if a bit of experience getting this one out I hopefully should be much quicker doing the other one so yeah um, move on to fitting the new one and fingers crossed this goes in easy okie dokie uh, some pre-installation prep um, on the new drop link you'll see there I have some copper grease in the threads there or quite a bit I know the internet experts will say, some of them will say, don't do it, don't do it, the bolt will fall out, etc, etc. Anyway, I'm using it for its um, anti-corrosion properties to try and stop the bolt season on. So if somebody else comes along after me, it's not going to be the same sort of mission to get it out. So I have coated the threads there, um, the surface of the collars in there and there and on the trailing arm and anti-roll bar the two faces where the bushes and collars are going to sit the metal and metal contacts don't get copper grease in the rubber it does actually eat away at the rubber so try your best not to have it near there um, and just as a comparison between the melee drop links and the OE ones you can see the difference in diameter there in the two rods so I would say even the OE replacements are quite a bit better quality than the the OE VW ones um, anyway I'll get these chucked in and fingers crossed this top bolt goes in a-okay and just as a note regarding this nut it's actually a crush nut and if you look at it it's slightly pinched down as if my fingers were pinching it that's obviously just to hold the lot as lock or the nut as a lock nut um, it doesn't have anything like a nylon nylock insert or anything like that or a nylon insert it's another way of doing it so you'll find you'll catch a few threads and it'll go quite tight and um, in that case just keep turning and that's the sort of nut pushing itself back out um, into a rounder shape than being oval and um, basically that's just as i said acts as a, as a lock nut so don't be concerned but obviously just make sure you're on the threads properly but anyway, I'll get this top knot in, fingers crossed it goes in, easy peasy, we'll find out. That is the stud and nut for the lower section of the drop link, uh, copper greased up. And you'll see there I have a second jack under the lower arm there. That's just to uh, push the arm back up, because um, I have it lifted just in one corner there as you can see. Short story is that will allow the arm to go pa back up and that will bring the uh, drop link and anti-roll bar back in line so you can thread through the bolt, through the hole. So I'll give that a go now. Making good progress now. You can see that top knot, obviously the shiniest bit there, is loosely on. So that's on and I can you see that there if I zoom out you can probably see the lower uh, drop link bolt is lightly on there so I'm going to start tightening these up um, and that should be me pretty much in business it's a wee bit tricky just sort of getting the level of the trailing arm back up and anti-roll bar and lining up these two holes but a bit of patience and you get there but yeah that's that done um, and just to show you on these melee um, arms that's a 15mm ratchet spanner and I believe that is a 4mm uh, hex key hex key obviously holds the stud as mentioned before in place and the ratchet spanner much quicker way of doing things to tighten up the nuts but yeah I'll get these tightened up now and that should hopefully be me in business Hey folks, as you can see I'm now on the passenger side of the car and you'll see there the uh, drop link is being cut off and the anti-roll bar just there. 
again this one was seized up quite bad um, so saving myself time you just cut them off and you'll see a bit of debris there I did actually snap the hacksaw blade it got caught just as that those two parts were starting to release it got caught between them so it ended up shattering just as it finished cutting through it so um, nothing major to have spare blades but a good hacksaw does actually go through the bolts um, obviously get a few spare blades and that will go through it and I do of course have my Dremel that started off the work uh, with a wee cutting wheel on it um, now the next stage here will be to take off the wheel and try and have a go at the top uh, part of the drop link I've given that a few taps with a hammer and I'll give it another spray with uh, plus gas and fingers crossed it comes out cleanly as well a uh, bit of bad news here folks this last nut isn't coming off so the cutting discs are out um, I'm going to try cutting from this side of a wee bit more clearance rather than round the back but either way I should be able to get it out um, by either from this side or the back side and fingers crossed that does it um, yeah, these things take time but hopefully that will get the drop link out and that will hopefully allow me to get the new one fitted success folks yeehaw the last nut as you'll see there has been released from the drop link this is the top one and you can see the shape of the nut there the way it was left basically it was corroded on massively to the end of this stud and you see I've chopped off a good chunk of the end of it um, and cut down the middle of it and that weakened the whole assembly enough that putting I have them these vice grips up onto the back yeah, clamping on about there on the drop link that allowed me to clamp it in place stick a ratchet on it and loosen the nut off uh, so yeah that's uh, the job done now a quick replacement of the uh, drop link putting a new one in clean everything up first of all and that should be me good to go Okie okay, dokie, okay. just as a sort of last closing video, you can see that's the drop link in. It's not fully tight yet, there still is a wee bit of movement in it, but um, I have it set back in place. Uh, as I said, not that tight, but just trying to set the thing up in place, make sure everything's okay. And I have the jack, as you can see, under the lower arm there. So um, I'm not preloading any of this, the uh, drop links or anything like that. And you'll find actually if you can't line, say you do the top uh, bolt first, if you can't line this lower one up, get that jack under it, push it up and you'll find the two, uh, the anti-roll bar will line up and allow you to slide it in. But yeah, that's it pretty much in place. I'll just go through um, and tighten these up just to show you. The key goes in there like so, locks that centre bit in place to stop it turning. And then I would highly recommend a ratchet spanner. Get a set of these either way, sit them on, tighten it up, and that's pretty much you in business. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, at one stage, the old different sizes and shapes of keys that hold the, or lock those in place. Even in that drop link, it's a hex nut up there and it's a splined uh, shaft there, so they do differ slightly. But either way, hopefully this video gives you a quick idea of how to fit the drop links to your Mark V Golf style platformed car. Um, it is an easy enough job. Obviously the rust and corrosion cost me great issues, but it is a DIY job. I would suggest investing in the likes of a Dremel to be able to cut the bolts off, a good hacksaw and maybe a set of ice grips and stuff stuff beyond what you might normally have in a standard set of tools or toolkit that way but like i say hopefully that video helps a bit um and this has obviously encouraged me to get carried away with the suspension it's a wee bit crusty under here even despite the low miles so i'm tempted to get a thicker rear anti-roll bar 
um, working the handle in a bit like a front wheel drive car put a thicker stiffer rear anti roll bar on and try and get the car turning that bit sharper um, but yeah that's the next uh, or well that's a further down the line plan and um, the next video is probably going to be the front drop links so hopefully they're that bit easier but well, we'll find out and hopefully they aren't as crusty as these ones but yeah, all the best folks. Cheers, bye.